because I continue to see it, that grace abound. You can go back over there in Romans 6 and see that. He's telling me right there. But when I got a hold of that thing, and it made me feel so bad on the next day, and I swore up and down that I wasn't going to do it no more. But the minute I got better, sin creeped right back in and sent me right back to the very thing that ill, that alienated me, that illed me. Paul is saying the same thing here. Now then it is I. Now then it is no more I that do it. Sin that dwells in me. It's the enemy. Eve didn't want to bite the apple. She was told from the commandment of God, don't look, eat of this fruit of this tree in the midst of the garden. But Satan beguiled the woman of God. He didn't draw her to the tree. Her curiosity took her over there. Am I anywhere in the area of how you get tempted? Don't be tempted. Shine the very presence of evil. If you know it's wrong, then don't do it. Don't go over there. And then you will get caught up in the dilemma which you are in. Wondering eyes, wondering lips. These things, wondering minds, cause you to fall into sin. If you never wanted to get married, you wanted to go out there and live like a loose cannon. If it was something that don't stop you anyway. It was just a matter of time. They got all kind of alphabets out there that can stop you. You can catch all kind of stuff now these days if you get out there. But you came into this thing for the wrong reason. And now so many years down the line, it's all messed up. Not only in the midst of just marriage, but even in the midst of committing yourself to Christ. You became anger. Thinking that when you came into the body of Christ as being one who saved, it was going to be catered to just to you. But God said that the word of God is no more than just a mouthpiece. Your job is to get the words and take it and study it to your own good. And when you study it to your own good, then you have a personal relationship with Christ. And then when you have a personal relationship with Christ, Christ will teach you how to speak to him in heavenly language. So that's a conversation you can have with God. The old folks used to say, I, 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 got a, I got a telephone in my bosom. You know, I dial one for the Father. I dial one for the Son. And I dial one for the Holy Ghost. That even when an oil talk was coming to you in such a way that you don't believe that it can hear you for whatever it is that's in your body, I got to get up out of here. I, I got to finish this thing because I'm about to move on it. But I'm about in the midst of it. I'm going to stop it right here. But then I got to go and take care of my little daughter. She's first on my list. And God knows that he's not going to bring any discrepancy in between that. Because he knows I love him. But you got to understand that when you're outside the will of God, anything doesn't happen. Let me go with a few more verses here. Then it is not I, no more than I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. The 18th verse. For I know that in me that is my flesh. See, he knew what was going on. And most of us who do things get angry while we do it. And then the outcome don't come out the way it need to come out. I'm just breaking preliminaries for you. Y'all ain't seen nothing yet. I'm about to crack the kingdom on this one on y'all. Because there's too many people in the body of Christ frustrated with anger. There's too many people frustrated in their covenants of what God gave them. Marriages, one sleeping in one bedroom, one sleeping in the other. You're whipping and beating on the kids because you angry. Ain't nothing wrong with the kids. They're just kids. You whooping on them because you mad. Your finances ain't going right. You're spending money. The bank, you, you, you give money to you. You go to church every day. Help me, Holy Spirit. Don't let my mouth get tangled. You go to church every day. You come out the same way. You depend on the man to deliver you for whatever it is. And God already told you, that's just your coach. So like I told you about my young daughter when she was in the swimming pool. The coach told her to jump. But once she learned to jump in the deep and stop depending on the side, then God said, I will catch you. Then sometimes you got to learn how to launch out into the deep. When your marriage is going bad, then you got to know how to sit down like sensible people and begin to talk to one another. You know you have some things in your life that wasn't right. You know you love him. He loved you. But now you're mourning about the process because now he's going and you want somebody else. The kids are sitting there with no father and then the world is going wild. The world will teach him in a minute. If you want to bring somebody else in and say, I'm even talking to somebody. There's things that come on TV and lead you to a pornographic area. And you just keep looking at things you know you're not supposed to look at. Now you get all this stuff trapped in your mind. And then the Christ doesn't work right with you. You're job is not going right. Your sales is not going right. Your relationship with whoever you meet is not going right. They only look at you one way. Don't you want somebody to look at you for what God sees in you, whether what they see from you physically? I'm trying to get you to help somewhere. Temptation is all your life. You got all kind of lust in your body that's coming against you. You can't make the right decision of what you're in because you don't know how, because your mind is all right. And the Bible declares that if any man to be in Christ, he's a new creature. Christ is not just renewing you from a physical standpoint of view. He want to renew you spiritually. He want to make you like a newborn babe. But you're frustrated 
God. You all messed up. You all discombobulated. You're mad at everybody. People talking about you. Talking about them. You're backbiting. You don't think you're not, not, you're not supposed to be there. I'm talking about that angry one on this morning. I believe if you can handle it, you can receive it. I've been there. I know what you're talking about. Church folks make you mad. Your family make you mad. Am I there? Huh? Am I telling you? Your job make you mad. The finances that you purchase when you got the new car, now you got to pay a four or five hundred or eight hundred dollar car note. You're mad about that when it come up every month. You got it. Then nobody make you go get it. You want to please the people around you. You want to draw people to you with the material things. You haven't got a house to really get in. You've been in the foreclosure of about four or five times. You know how that's going to come because you chose a house because you want to set among the, the rich. You want to set among the good. I, that's something about this person they call the Jones or whoever it is. I don't know who they is. And I don't want to meet them. I'm not trying to keep up with nobody. But I thank God he blessed me for what I got. But one thing I'm telling you, if you want to be frustrated, keep walking out of the will of God. Apostle Paul makes it very plain right here. There's no more I but sin that dwelleth in me. The 18 verse. For I know that in me it is not it is in my flesh. He said it is in my flesh. He knew it. And according to the word of God, when he created Adam and Eve in the garden, and Adam and Eve went over to that that that, that tree and Eve, and Eve, Eve, Eve got the gift and she turned and gave it to Adam, which put him on the scene as well. And then all of a sudden, they got the getting crossed up and discombobulated. God came in the cool of the Eden. Adam had to answer to what he done because he was ahead of the garden. He didn't follow command. In my own name, the reason we fall in the father of what we're in, and the reason we get in trouble with Christ, because we don't go and we're not obedient. Lord, don't let, my, don't let me fumble on this word in the name of Jesus. Paul declares in the cruise for it's not, it's not, it's not I, it is not, if I know that it's in me, he said, I know it's in me. Because I'm born in the sin, but I'm not of sin. I got a savior to save me, but the flesh keeps on taking over me. For I know that it's in me, that it in me is my flesh that does no good thing. For the will is present. Come on, somebody. But temptation keep on whooping me beside my head. And every time I get a knot in my head, I keep complaining about it. The will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I do not what? I do not understand. Or I do not find it. Or I do not understand it. The scripture reads out perfectly in verse 19 of uh, Romans 7 says, For the good that I will to do, I do not. He said it right there. I don't do it. I'm hard headed. I'm rebellious. I'm full of anger. But now the enemy comes in. But evil, but the evil which I, but I will not, that I do. I, I, it's all up in me. It, it's all there. I love, I just love the way the man of God talked about, uh, I, I talk about this brother because he's a humble brother. He, uh, 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 a lot of them out there are good. Dr. Wilson, a uh, good man of God. All of these good men, Apostle uh, Vaughn, these are good men of God. But God chose this man, uh, J.C. Matthews. And he talked about how one of the instances I can't get out of my mind, how we as Christians got to become more mature according to the book of Hebrews and how we got to get out of what we call the ABCs in the ministry. We got to get out of the elementary things in the ministry. We got to come to more maturity. I heard the man of God in the back rooms, Louisiana says sometimes when you got a child growing, you go out of stuff. You go out of clothes. You go out of shoes. You go out of uh, 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 clothes or stuff in that nature. But sometimes we as men and women, we want to keep stuff in our closet just to nostalgia ourselves. God said, you got to get rid of everything. The word of Apostle Paul is speaking in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. He said, if any man would be in, then you got to get rid of all the things in your past and submit yourself totally to Christ. And even when you submit yourself totally to Christ, sin has still got the ability to come in and tempt you. Paul declares, so it ain't me. I find it ain't in me. It's the flesh that's in me. He goes on over the 20 verse. He said, if I, if I do... But I would not. Now he said something there. Now if now he come to a reason, the word N O W. He said now present is tense. Now if I do, that I would not. If I follow the rules and regulations of Christ, if I understand the word of Proverbs three and five, if I don't do the things according to the command of God, it is no more I that do it. But sin, I'm breaking the distinction between the two. Galatians five and sixteen. We wrestle, I mean, uh, Galatians 5 and 16, excuse me, for walking in the Spirit. 
Do we not fulfill the lust and the desires of the flesh? Because the flesh lusts against me. He's telling us right there. Paul said the same thing right here. For I understand that what I'm doing, I know it's not me that's doing it because I'm a Christian man. But I want the flesh that's grabbing me. God, man, God, I tell you, man, remember, it, it, it's, a, it's, it's, it's always a pleasure. But I, I'm telling you, I got to, I got to move. I, I got to move, and I got to go. It, 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 look, we love you here at Harvest New Life Church. Uh, we, we desire that the Word of God will continue to move richly in you. And it's not, it's always our will that, 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 that this series will be something. Now, we're just breaking the preliminaries open. We started getting to the nitty-gritty yet. Because this is going to be one of the things that's going to free a lot of us from the very action and events that's going on in our lives. Both in our marriages, both in our everyday walk, both in our jobs, both in our communication skills, both in our friendship. When we get rid of the big, big, big A, anger, are you the angry one? The story comes to me from a man by the name of uh, old pastor, by the name of Jim Williams out of there here in the state of Texas. Uh, and he said that he told me a story about a man who had cheese in his pocket. But everywhere he went, it stunk. Does that sound familiar? They say every other man went in meetings in the elevators back home. No, he hadn't been home yet because home is Christ. See, he went to the elevators, he went to his meeting, he brought his friends, he was in the car. He kept smelling this stench, this smell. He thought it was his friends, he thought it was the places that he was in, he thought it was the people he dwelled among. But when he got onto his house, he kept on smelling the stench. He said, that smell is still here. It wasn't my friends, it wasn't my job, it wasn't my co-mates, uh, it wasn't my co-workers. It, it, it was really, he found out when he put his hand in his own pocket. Not so much in the physical part of putting his hand in his own pocket and find the cheese that was in his pocket. That it was with a stench. It's when he began to look deep down in his soul to find out that he still had problems in his own life. Am I with somebody this morning? God bless you. God keep you. We're going to finish this series out on tomorrow. As we get into some of the other depths, I want you to really read into this. We're going to pick up from the 21st verse of Romans 7, but I'm actually uh, take you back up to um, the 1st and bring down to the 7th, and we're going to revert back down to the 21st. Let me say that again. We're going to start in the 21st verse of chapter 7 of the book of Romans chapter 7, but we're going to go back up to chapter 1. We're going to read down to verse 11, and then we're going to come back down to verse 21, and we're going to see how this comes in agreement where the Apostle Paul is speaking in this very, what we call, a tedious walk in his walk with the being the man of God. God bless you, God keep you. I love you guys. Look, uh, if you guys want to get a hold of me, you can. Uh, prayer still not too late. I still offer prayer requests and calls and all through the day, all through the night. I never stop doing the work. Uh, 214-870-2146. Or you can go to my website, which is going to be soon to change here. You know, most of you I went to my WordPress, which is Charles Ellis Ministries. You're going to hear a lot more of that coming here in the future. It's just going to be Charles Ellis Ministries. I tell you all the time, we don't have a, what you call a huge congregation of church. I don't build buildings. I build people. I believe God has called me to a nation. With being called to that nation, I'm going to have to sharpen my tools with this man of God over with uh, J.C. Matthews International Ministries to get me prepared for the work that God is calling me to do. Let's go out to all the world. You Next time you might hear me, you might hear me calling you from Japan. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to convert some over there in the name of Jesus. I'm called to do the work. I, this is a missionary season for me. Now that I come with some identified things that Christ has really wanted to do for me in my life, it's not about me gathering inside a maze. It's time to be getting you outside the maze. That when you go outside those walls, you got to look up and declare you are not entering the mission field, the most popular field. Because the Word of God declares that the harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Man of God, God bless you, God keep you. We pray that you guys enjoyed this first part of the segment of The Angry One. Hope you'll continue to tune in and hear what the Word of God has to say. God bless you. Sing Cassie, he loves us. He loves us. 